I'm Larissa Vigu Picard. I'm the executive director here at the Jeff Scott History Center. And PHC is the historical society and main resource for local history in this region, the Pajepscot region, which is Brunswick, Topsom, Harpswell. That is a word that always makes people's ears perk up. Um, it is a bit of a challenge when it comes to people getting the spelling right and so forth, but it's also a really fascinating word. It is a Wabanaki word. It refers, it's a place name. So when you, when you hear the word, the, the phrase Scott on the end of a place name in Maine, it refers to place of. Um, so Pajepscot really means um, the long rocky rapids of the river, referring to the Androscoggin. It's also been uh, translated as crooked like a diving snake because of the way the Androscoggin flows through and bifurcates um, Brunswick and Topsom. And so it's a word that was pretty much appropriated by the Europeans when they arrived, even though it really wasn't theirs to begin with. But we use it today more in honor of the original people who were named that. Um, we've been around for 130 some odd years. We were the fourth oldest historical society in the state of Maine. Um, so we have a lot of collections. We have more than 100,000 local history collections. You know, I've been here five years as director, and I have probably dipped my toe into 1% of it. We have um, what is possibly the oldest birch bark Wabanaki canoe um, still in existence. We had it carbon dated uh, three years ago to between 1750 and 1800. And that's actually on display right now at the Maine Maritime Museum. And then we have two major historic house museums, the Schofield Whittier House and the Joshua L. Chamberlain Museum. Whittier House in Brunswick, Maine, and this is a large Italianate duplex, brick duplex, sitting on Park Row right in the front, right in the center of downtown. It is uh, a time capsule, really. Many people describe it that way. It was home to three generations um, of a family, a uh, family line, and came into possession of Pajepscot History Center in 1982 when it was donated to us. The Schofield family made all their money in the shipbuilding and shipping industry. By default, they were making some of their money, okay, a lot of their money off of the backs of, um, of slaves, of, of the slave economy. They had a shipyard right over the border from Brunswick into Harpswell. And in the 19th century, they were going down to the south and picking up cotton and bringing it back to the textile mills up here or going over to Europe. So we like to kind of be right up front about that with people, um, Alfred and Martha Schofield. They had um, two daughters. Um, and then one of those daughters, Eugenie Schofield, married a man named Frank Whittier. And they lived in this house and they had three daughters. And the Whittier generation in the middle, Frank Whittier was pretty well known for um, being a fairly progressive medical doctor and believing in health and wellness. He was um, the doctor of residence up at Bowdoin. Um, and his wife, Eugenie, was incredibly progressive as well because uh, her parents had, had brought her up to think for herself um, in an age where that was pretty unusual. And so Alice Whittier, in the final generation, the person who donated the house to us, was actually the first female pediatrician in Maine. She followed in her father's footsteps and became a, a medical doctor. Um, I'm standing in sort of the this this most splendorous room, although all the rooms in the house are pretty amazing. This room really showcases a lot of the wealth that the family amassed um, from their travels. The drapes in here are from Europe, the carpets from Europe. Many of the decorations and knickknacks you see around you are from Europe and Asia. 
Um, and that was really important to a Victorian family to kind of showcase um, this success and, and wealth that they had amassed. So we're in the, the dining room of the Schofield Whittier House, and this is really their formal um, entertaining area. There's a lot of influences in this room from Europe because they redid the room after they came back from being in Europe for about 18 years. They had these very, very fancy curtains. These now are uh, reproductions because the original curtain that we have over here is, uh, those are really, really fragile. We had reproductions made. They brought back a ton of artwork with them from Europe. And what you see on the walls are very pastoral, landscape, animal images. And those, that was the, really the sort of trend and fashion at the time. They also have a tea set um, and screen here from China. And um, there's a Russian samovar on the sideboard. It's really of a, a sort of a round the world tour in this room. They're basically saying to their guests, we know um, what the, the upper crust people really, you know, um, act like and uh, show off. And so this was a room that they really wanted to uh, use to impress people. Charlotte um, came down uh, before all of the rest of the family was up and whether she was um, just wanting to stoke the fire put another piece of wood in the fire or was perhaps just playing around the stove nobody knows but the next thing that they did know was they heard screams and they all came down and Charlotte's um, night clothes were all caught were all on fire of course her father was a doctor and he could administer her to her but they also got a doctor from down the street the best they could do was give her morphine and she passed away that evening very sad tragic story for the family obviously her mother never really got over, got over it um, it's an all too common story in the victorian era because women had so many long um, flowing clothes, even, you know, things they slept in and so uh, that were, were flammable. On this table, Isabel Whittier had her appendix taken out by her father, Frank Whittier. Of course, he was a doctor. He could, he could do that. And um, this is a table that people at, ate at before and after. We do have um, the Virgin Mother here uh, overlooking us in the kitchen. And that's pretty unusual to have such a large bust of Mary in a kitchen like this. We're not 100% sure why she's in here, except there has been some speculation that it could have been after nine-year-old Charlotte um, died from being um, caught on fire in this room. And so they wanted Mary to be in here to look over the family forever after that. <music> restored much of the first floor, the second floor we've resto restored almost none of. And we have missing plaster, peeling paint, um, water damage from a leaking chimney. 19th century properties, and one as huge as this one, cost a lot of money. Um, so we are really, really appreciative of all of our members. We have an annual membership that gets you lots of great benefits. We're really appreciative of people who contribute to our annual fund every year. Really, it takes a village to raise a 19th century property back to glory. Uh, when the pandemic hit, we did close to the public and we were very fortunate that the staff could work from home. Um, when we opened back up uh, as of July 7th, we were able to do um, private, open up for private appointments only. And that's what we're still doing now. And that means private tours in both of our historic house museums. 
uh, private research appointments to come in and do local history research, genealogy, or researching your old house or what have you. We have been doing Zoom programs monthly, and those have been pretty successful. We've actually been you know, getting more people from further away to uh, attend those. So we're definitely busy and open. The best way to reach us if you want a tour, private tour or private research appointment is go to our website, pajepscotthistorical.org and go to the visit section and there is a submission form for tours and all of our contact information to reach us. It's a fabulous venue and not enough people know about it. So the more we can do to draw people here and um, to uh, bring it back to its former glory, the better. Mm -hmm.